Um, mm, mm, <laughs> I like to hum. <laughs> um, okay. We'll get a t-shirt of me and you just beating the mixer with a bat. That would be so awesome. <laughs> that would be <laughs> fucking great, man. You know, somebody, John Oliver, didn't he make a Harambe joke? <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Some oh, and Saturday Night Live made a Harambe joke. Like recently? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was a weekend update. Oh, well, there they go. <laughs> and it was Michael Che was sending something to Colin Jost and it said, um it was something like, Dear Colin, uh, uh they should have killed you instead of Harambe. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> it should have been you instead of Harambe. <laughs> Would that mean that Harambe would have ended up with Scarlett Johansson? Probably. Wow. And she's pregnant, too. Is she really? Yeah, I think so. Wow, she's got a little Yoast. Little mm. Colin Jost. <laughs> Hello, my name is Colin Jost. Need a little David Pumpkins action. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, any questions? <laughs> Fucking, that's so great, dude. <laughs> Who are these guys? We're part of it. <laughs> it's funny, dude. Nice. Look it up. Look up. Uh, not the David Pumpkins Halloween special, mm-hmm. but just the David Pumpkins skit. Nice. Yeah. Check it out. Okay. <gasps> okay. <laughs> okay, guy. I'm done. Um, okay. Uh, ten seconds for Harambe. Next week, we'll have with us in the studio a truly fine talent and beautiful personality, Miss Muffy Singleton. And we're back with evangelist and moral crusader, the Reverend Aaron Gilstrom, who's dropped by with some visual aids. We're talking today about rock pornography, and I'll have to agree with you, we have some pretty ribald stuff here. Those, those rockers really have a strange sense of humor, don't they? I don't even think it's a sense of humor. I think they're just out and out sick people, I mean, and they're trying to make everyone else around them uh, who, play, who listens to their music as sick as they are. Uh, Reverend, let me ask you a question. This album, uh, Do It Like a Dog. Now, this uh, this has to be about animal behavior, is that right? Let Materially? me give you a, a, an example. I okay. have one of the lyrics. That you will, uh, right. Tell me what you honestly think it's Go right about. ahead. Gonna drive my long steel missile down on your love channel. Deep, deep, you'll beg for more. Raising hell and serpent score. Feel me, feel me. Now, what does that mean to you? To me, it means nothing but a sexual act. Demonic beast. What happened to the good old simple love song? I love you. That's, that's a good word to use. Nowadays, they have to write some sickness. It's just absolutely sick and bizarre, and I'm going to do my utmost best to try and stop it now. Anything you'd like to say in conclusion? These evil people have just got to be stopped. Ah! Quite good. Attack warning red. Attack warning. Are you for real? Attack warnings for bloody real. Live from Colorado Springs, the Drop Culture Podcast. Want to confirm, is this an exercise? Roger, copy. This is not an exercise. Come on, quick, get down. Welcome, everybody, to the Drop Culture Podcast. This is that podcast where we pick up that piece of pop culture you forgot about or missed, shine it up real nice, cram it in your ear holes. Welcome to our Halloween episode. Yes, an iconic movie from an iconic year with an iconic actor and an iconic, two iconic rock and roll stars. I I, I was trying to figure out who the iconic actor was. (laughs) (laughs) Well... He's iconic to me. And we are doing Trick or Treat 1986. This will be um, 
somewhat of an anniversary for this. This came out yeah. October 27th of 1986. And this will be released on the 29th of October. Mm-hmm. So it's right about the same time. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that's yeah. about it. So <laughs> and how old does that make this movie, Brock? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, a, uh, um, it would be 35. Five. Yeah. yeah. Whoa, it's oh, the yeah. 35th anniversary of Trick or Treat. Yeah. Wow. So you're going to be we listening. We did that with our friend Math. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> and like, I can't still tell time with a regular uh, regular clock. I need digital. <laughs> oh, no. That's, uh, I'm like, that's not good. 15, 30. <laughs> it's four. Yeah. Um, ah, shit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's like this past four. <laughs> 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 Give me a quarter till. What is that? <laughs> Our daughter said the other day that she's like, I hate the clock in your room. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't read it. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry. Like, oh, no. <laughs> it's not good. It's like not being able to read a map. But that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> no, we're talking about Trick or Treat from 1986. What do you think about this movie, Brock? Where do we, where do we want to start? I love it. Love it? I love it, love it, love it, love, love it. it, love it. This was a movie that my dad had recorded on um, one of the eight-hour VHS tapes, you know. Sure. He probably bought a pack of five, I think. Uh, And they were the TDKs. Okay. You know. As as they should be. Yeah. And it was labeled. You know, my dad labeled them. Because he would find, he would look through the HBO guide, you know. Remember the little bit um, paper HBO guides? Yeah, I remember. Of course. Awesome. I were, like, I was excited when those showed up. Yeah. I was like, oh, cool. What movies are out? <laughs> yeah. What oh, haven't I seen? Friday on the 13th, they're mm-hmm. going to be, oh, oh, my God, they're mm-hmm. playing Friday the 13th part <laughs> one. What? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah. So, it, and he recorded all the late night movies, too. Nice, nice. This may be where a lot of my affinity for the late night movies, besides me staying up all night, right. but my dad had an affinity for them, too. Sure. So, which sure. is really cool. Um, but this is one that I had. This is one that I've had in my life for years. I saw this movie back in the day. Yes. Yeah. It was probably 1987 or 88, yeah. the first time I saw it. Yeah. No joke. Um, probably the first time. 87, yeah, probably. Probably the first time it came out on cable. Because there's no way I was going to see this in the theater in my, no, my no, city. Yeah, no. Even the Fox Theater wouldn't. I'm I think sure I saw sure. this on video mm-hmm. cassette. I. I told you one time that I did when I lived in Dallas. I used to go to all the um, the mom and pop rental stores. Yeah, yeah. And I walked in one day to this one that was I don't know twenty miles away from my house. Like I would go just everywhere and be like, right, "Oh, sure. there's a video store over here." This was before GPS and all that other stuff. Right, so right. I'd see it and be like, <laughs> "You know." So I went in. Um, of course, they wouldn't give me a. Because I lived so far away, they wouldn't give me a uh, membership or something like that. But they had a deal that you could rent or buy any of the movies on the shelf. Okay. It must have been a front. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see no porno section. You know what I mean? <laughs> this VHS, the Lorimar VHS, was there. Nice. And I was like, holy crap. Right. I, I have to get this. So I did. I I've totally bought that. I had it up until two or three years ago. Wow. Yeah. I don't know why I got rid of Trick or Treat. I should not have. I mean, it was uh, it just, again, it was an iconic movie to me. And the the cover was all sun bleached. Like it had been sitting there for since 1987. It was on the front row. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> the horror section was right there by the windows. Yep, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, there's just something about this movie that I love all the way through it. I can watch it multiple times in a day if I wanted to. Absolutely. And always just love absolutely every part. What What are your thoughts about it? Um, so, again, yeah, I think I saw it. I was young, you know, probably probably when, when it first came out on video. And I was – that was a little bit after the time my mom managed a video store. Like, she was early on in it. Um, but still, But still right around there. You know what I mean? Um, so I was pretty heavy into getting those rentals. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I enjoyed it. I've watched it multiple times in my life. I don't think I could watch it multiple times in a month. Um, I can't, I mean, I did for this show. So yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? Like it wouldn't be my choice. Like I'm going to watch this again. 
yeah. again and again. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. I, I love um, the stories from the 80s that were like the punk kids, yeah. you know, and the, the outcasts that were kind of one up in the, the, the dudes, you know, right. like the um uh the pussy fucking wheat tits yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like they were actually taking people on so like yeah. i mean i was always a big fan of bender come on who wasn't well uh, if, if you think about that though i mean that's kind of where all forms of media kind of come from they try to identify with you know mm-hmm. you think about some of the bigger icons in the world you know like peter parker right you know what i mean right um and that was in the 60s obviously but I think that you see a lot of that, like Harry Potter even. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. To some degree. He it's was, a fish out of water almost, but yet they're using their skills. Right, right. That they inherently have. Bender was a little different. He's just like, fuck it all. I know, right? <laughs> but <laughs> even even since then, because I did see Breakfast Club in the theaters. I yeah. remember it. I mean, it was wow, awesome. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I um, did not. Yeah, yeah I, re- cool. I just remember everything about it. Um, but... It's like I identify more with those people because I always felt like I was those people anyway. Gotcha. But I really wasn't, you know? Right. I mean, I was kind of – I knew a lot of people, but I always I always personified – I always wanted to personify that. Gotcha. You know, the way that that was. Be the – not necessarily the loner, but the person doing his own thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's – you but know, I think that was – Kind of the point of a movie called Breakfast Club that we're not doing a show about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Trick or Treat. I mean, you have this guy that's into heavy metal, and then back then, heavy metal was totally looked down upon. Right. The uh, the parents' um, music. I'd say it was really just becoming more mainstream, though. You know, uh, and and that's hard to say. I mean, if you want to consider like maybe the first metal Black Sabbath or something, like a lot of right. people do. Obviously, that was mainstream enough. Deep but, Purple, you know, things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but even they were. But, the the metal at the time, you're absolutely right. It was like, oh, that kid's a metalhead. Yeah. But you were also getting that Motley Crue time. Yeah, it was hair metal. You know, and that's where it became like the MTV popular stuff. You yeah. Know? D. Snyder, yeah. Um, Judas Priest. Yep. Now there's, uh, I, I still have an affinity for that kind of music too. I used sure. to, I used to Depends not. on the music. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I mean, mm. ACDC, things like that. Those are, those are right on the surface. You can grab right, sure, you, sure. Those are the vanilla cookies at right. K-Bob's. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. like, yoink. I'm taking two of those. <laughs> um, but like, <laughs> I mean, and, and seeing somebody like Ozzy Osbourne in this, Gene yeah, Simmons. Absolutely. Uh, you, you had this really, I don't know. It's just, it's something that I, I still always, I, I want to see myself as that. It's weird. Yeah. No, yeah. no, that's thanks, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's weird, but I, I think that that's not uncommon, and I think that that's just evolved over time of what that is. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had the the metalheads, the skater kids, the I don't know, the insane clown posse people. <laughs> I don't know if Ouch. I count them in there. <laughs> oh. The Juggalos. Juggalos, thank you. Um, I'm not saying those are included in that. I'm nah. just saying, but you know what I mean. But yeah, it is yeah. to some degree. It's just yeah, different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the stoner kids. And, <clears throat> right. Yeah, I mean, there is uh, – and this movie really does, I guess – and I'm going to use this uh, word correctly this time, personifies this kind of underdog type of a deal. Right. Which, you know, he had it – was, it was a suburb underdog. You know what I mean? It was kind of – classic trope, you know? 100%. I mean, and it was it was well done, I think. <laughs> it was really cheesy on a lot of stuff. There are some cheesy parts. But, oh, my God. Come on. Uh, you have a rock star. So, so basically what the movie's about is a rock star – puts his soul into a record and the main character plays it backwards <laughs> right? and he comes out. Mm-hmm. So there we go. And helps him revenge against the people that are, have done him wrong. Right. right. But in a way where, you know, he kills them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like really crazily. Um, okay. And shoots like um, lightning out of his, uh, his guitar. Yeah. His, his get box. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> And he's he plays guitar with fingernails. I don't know how that happens. He, he does. <laughs> he does it. He shreds that shit. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so this movie was directed by Charles Martin Smith. Yes. Now Charles Martin Smith was he was the geeky dude that was on American Graffiti and American Graffiti Two. Uh, he wanted to start directing movies, and they said, "Hey, 
we got this movie for you. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hell yeah. It's about a rock and roll dude. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think he really did much after this, <laughs> you know, but awesome. You know, this was his first movie. It was very dark. The the film stock that they used and the, the lighting that they used, you could tell was more realistic right. in a way. So it was that. darker. It it still had that aspect of, it, especially in like his room and stuff like that, you know, where they only use natural light, it looked like right. a lot of the times. So I guess the, the um, I don't know how it works, but everything was just wide open. So you really get the grainy, graininess of just whatever was in there the fuzz you could see that in there absolutely i would also say charles martin smith you may you recognize him from other things as well like um starman the untouchables you know that's right yeah he's always a dude with the glasses yep um just a nerdy kind of a dude um plays the character well um he's no um ron howard's brother (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but they could Clint Howard, Clint Howard, you know, Clint Howard and him, Charles Martin Smith in a movie. Oh, my God. Take me go. to paradise. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be Revenge of the Nerds 3. Oh, All nerds. Oh, nerds. <laughs> so, um, OK. Um, the main character, Mark Price. Mark Price. So you'll know him from a, a little television show. If you're of a certain age, you'll know of this show. Um, that's Family Ties. That was Michael J. Fox's big break as well. <laughs> um, and then as Michael J. Fox trans, you know, he he transferred over to movies around the Back to the Future time, which was just a year or two before this, right? Was it? Yeah, that's what I was looking looking up. Um, maybe it was, yeah. it was one year before. Yeah, eighty five. That's what I was um, thinking. So of course he had the same kind of commitments with the show, right? Um, as Michael J. Fox did whenever he was making it. But Michael J. Fox had a Steven Spielberg, Robert Zemeckis film, and he filmed at night. Yes, he like was still doing Family Ties. He did not break his contract, right? To do that. So what, Skippy or Mike Mark Price? Um, he had to kind. Of, he actually had to pass on a role early on. It was. Um, can't buy me love which patrick dempsey got and kind of brought him you yes. know, a little more forward in the light um so after his contract this is that's really when he got into this you know or right. what he could renegotiate his contract or however that worked out yeah yeah he was able to do this and i think he did a great job he's a yeah, legacy he he's like a hollywood legacy almost uh new new york entertainer legacy um he uh oh my god he was the son of al bernie and singer Joy Mann, um, they were the – he was – his father was a borscht belt. So I guess they, they toured the Catskills. He was one of those dudes. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So revered in his time. Everybody loved him. Everything like that, right? Um, uh, there is – he didn't really do a lot of movies after this. Uh, he even did a Killer Tomatoes movie. Um, yeah, you know who he played in Killer Tomatoes? Michael J. Fox. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just a guy named yeah. Michael J. Fox. <laughs> and, uh, you know, honestly, if you, if, if it's maybe. No Killer Tomatoes too. just throwing that out there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if they would have put him in a bigger movie, I think that um, he caught, probably could have gotten a few more roles and maybe lived up to, you know, kind of like the, uh, I, I just think his opportunities weren't there for yeah, him he at just a had certain to, point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think everything in Hollywood's a break here and there. You know what I mean? You just get the right role. You get the right opportunity, like you said. He is um, he is awesome. You know, he's a producer. He's a comedian. He still does all kinds of stuff like that. He did I a mean, bunch of kids shows at one time, I believe. What was it? Uh, like game show? Yeah, did he yeah. Did have a kid game, game show at one time? Win, lose, or draw? Um, Maybe. Teen win, lose, or draw. Yeah, something like that. Um, also... Um, he toured with Marsha Warfield and Jimmy Walker. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the sitcom Kid. Legends Tour. Dynamite? Dynamite. <laughs> and uh, Roz. Right. From uh, Night Court. Night Court. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. I mean, he's still out there. He does a lot of producing, things like that. I really do think that possibly, yeah, um, he could do something serious. He could He could take on this role again. Why not? 
in Trick or Treat Part 2, Ooh. written by Brock Smith. Where <laughs> he's the father <laughs> yes. of the child. Oh. That's now. Yeah. Oh. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Spoiler so. <laughs> alert there. Um, and then I, I think our next big person, and it's probably Sammy Kerr, who is the antagonist. Yes. Um, and Tony. he is Tony Fields. And before this, he was a solid gold dancer. <laughs> he only had like what, what, like three months worth of dancing training. And then they like took him on tour or something like that. I mean, the dude was like, he was, he was you legit. Can tell, and you can tell that he is a solid gold dancer in this movie. There's a lot of spins. There's a lot of spins. <laughs> There's a what, didn't the Thompson twins do a lot of spins mm-hmm. with their basses and guitars and stuff like yeah, that? Sure. <laughs> and they wore their spandex and stuff and they'd always show their butts moving. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, he toured with, uh, Debbie Reynolds. Um, that was one of his very, very first things to do. Um, and he was, wasn't he on fame or something like that? No, no, it was just a solid gold. Solid answer. gold. Yeah. He wasn't good enough for fame, I guess. <laughs> he was in, Maybe he didn't want to live forever. Right, right. <laughs> He'd been on. Uh, he didn't want to learn how to fly. <laughs> Murder She Wrote, L.A. Law, Monsters. Well, which uh, is, Monsters was awesome. W- Monsters, I love it. Um, it's just such a weird, oddball uh, kind of kind of an anthology show. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. I love the beginning of it too yeah. with the creatures <laughs> yeah. watching the show. Yeah, the Cyclops. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, who else we got that's of uh, import in this movie, my friend? Oh, because the main girl, and we should get look, Mark Price's character that we spoke about earlier. That's Eddie Weinbauer. He's the main character. We have Sammy Kerr, who is the um, heavy metal dude, you know, that we're going to talk about. He's the antagonist. And then um, Leslie Graham is the girl. But I don't think that Lisa Organo, or Orgolini really did much. No, she didn't. After that. No, 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 no. Uh, not a lot of people really did a lot of after this. I think the one dude that's the, the douchebag, Tim. Yeah, yeah. I think he was on like uh like some of those shows that nobody watches that you shouldn't watch, and yeah. like Desperate Housewives or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, think I read yeah. that. And plus, um, plus he was on you know the shitty like high uh like I don't know Highway to Heaven five point or some shit like that. You oh, know, I don't know, weird stupid ass shows that Touched nobody by really an angel. T- <laughs> <laughs> Sued by I, an angel. I was like, oh, that's Yikes. no means no angel. <laughs> yes. um, Doug Savant. Now he's a he is a complete one hundred percent douchebag looking guy. You know, he wears ties to high school. With well, boots. his character did. Yeah, Tim Haney did. Yeah, I'm I, honestly he's almost like a Johnny, but like Johnny was badass, right? From yeah. Karate Kid. Yeah, absolutely. This dude really wasn't that badass. No, you know? no, he was. Uh, but he was definitely the Johnny of this movie. Yeah, he just had blonde hair that was spiked up and shit right. like that, right? Uh, and <laughs> so then we have Nuke. Nuke, who is. Gene Simmons, Gene my friend. Simmons, so he's yes. the DJ of the movie, and this is uh, he was actually offered Sammy Kerr role. Yeah, but and he, he didn't want to do it. He wanted the smaller role of Nuke, the DJ. Imagine no twirl in Sammy uh, Kerr. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it would have been the same movie. Nope. Who else was offered that role? Uh, the dude from what was it? Um, I believe it was Blackie Lawless from Wasp. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And he said he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to sing somebody else's music and they already had the music for yeah. this. They already had the music. And we'll get into that in just a second on right. who that music was. You had, um, oh God, Glenn Morgan. Uh, Glenn Morgan ended up being a producer or something like that, right? Um, uh, sure. Yeah, the X-Files. <laughs> Big time. Oh, yeah. That was the guy that uh, yeah. ended up, he was a writer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Elaine Joyce was Angie Weinbauer, Eddie's mom. Yep. Um, which Mark Price is Eddie Weinbauer. Right. Um, you also have, now, this is so weird because they market this movie <laughs> with these two dudes <laughs> that yeah. share maybe less than 10 minutes worth of screen time. I'd say combined, probably right at 10 minutes, yeah, maybe. because you got Ozzy Osbourne. As Reverend Aaron Gilstrom. Yes, and his most um, lucid, I guess. Yeah, most lucid and coherent <laughs> yes. um, diatribe ever. He's so it was, good. I was like, I can understand him. <laughs> right. 
right, right. I know what he's saying without having to think about it. <laughs> he even, yeah, what did he record? Uh, what did they tape him for 45 minutes? 45 minutes, and there was no script for Ozzy. Yeah. It, he just ad libbed being this televangelist. Yeah. And did a great job. <laughs> yes. And they were like, yeah, well, unfortunately, we can't use it all, but it was really good. Yeah. And plus, he read lyrics from his own movie or his own song, <laughs> <laughs> Lick My Love Pump or something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> this is a Slide song. Slide your missile yeah. into my. <laughs> Whatever your silver missile, or, <laughs> I don't remember what it was. <laughs> he reads it, it was so funny. But it, they even they even kind of throw in that PMRC stuff, you know, yeah. the D Snyder saying, yeah. "Hey, you can't regulate, you can't." Um, We're not going to take it. Man. Yeah, we can't. Re- you can't regulate morality, <laughs> you know. And uh, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons I liked this movie when I was young too. I grew up like I had a good swath of my childhood where. Um, Adults around me listen to a lot of Ozzy Osbourne. That's cool. Know? Yeah. See, uh, the I think I went to when I went and saw the Power Team. Okay. Um, at our Civic Center. Power Team. Oh my God. Were they busting stuff for Jesus? Yes. Yeah. They would bend. Um, they would break chains and yeah. bend uh, pots and pans and shit like that, and then run through ice and stuff. And be like Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. And they would read a scripture and stuff like that. Yeah, it was yeah. fucking bitching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. I heard Lita Ford and his song mm-hmm. going over the PA, and I was just like, I loved it. Yeah. And I've always loved that song from this day. It was a big MTV song. I remember yeah. that. If I close my eyes <laughs> forever. <laughs> but yeah, that was my introduction because yeah. I didn't, I, okay. you know, I'm, we didn't really listen to a lot of that kind of music, but it was top 40 at the time, too. Gotcha. Um, so that stuff was on our Z93. Was that shit. Bark at the Moon? No, that was no. Alita Ford. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, but didn't they do a song together that was on one of his? Maybe oh, that was later. Later. That was probably, later, yeah. yeah. Lita Anyways. Ford's a badass. Um, and, um, Hard rock and chick. That's right. Um, so the biggest thing about this movie I think that was really cool is they pulled off one hell of a soundtrack. Not that many songs in it, but the songs that they do have by a little band called Fast Way. Yes. <laughs> that I can listen to this I can listen to those songs all the time. <laughs> I love them. I really do. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, man, but there were some talent involved, for sure. Um, so you had Fast Eddie Clark. Um, and what band was Fast Eddie Clark from? Uh, he was from uh, Motorhead. A little, little band called Motorhead. A little Motorhead. Dave King. Dave King. He was on lead vocals. Um, then he you had... Were. Yeah, Pete Way. Yeah, they, they had so from many UFO, groups. right? Yeah, yeah. So many different like supergroup dudes, but they were all different. In this '86 lineup, had a had it was Dave King, Fast Eddie, Shane Carroll was the second guitar, Paul Reed was bass, Alan Connor was drums, Mick Feet bass on one of the tracks. You know, I mean, and this was one of those, but it was kind of one of those evolving supergroups. Yeah, but never took off. They had no. like two albums, no, three albums. But I think they did pretty well. They had a couple albums, or one, at least one album that did really well, didn't it? This one did. This one, yeah. Yeah. Because this, this was basically their fourth album was the soundtrack for this movie. What? <laughs> what? It's so awesome, though. It's so awesome, like the Wraith movie, yeah. you know what I mean? Having that kick-ass soundtrack in 1986. <laughs> right, right. Uh, this would be an LP that I would love to have. A good 180-gram <laughs> vinyl LP of Trick or Treat, you know? <laughs> There's uh, good songs, like, um, of course, the titular song. <laughs> right. Trick or Treat. Then you got After Midnight, Don't Stop the Fight, Stand Up, Turn Down the Walls, Get Tough, Hold On to the Night, Heft. Heft, I think, was the, the one song that a lot of people like about that right on. and then you got if you could see you know so uh, it's available on itunes and all your other favorite streaming <laughs> <laughs> and, and i don't know if we mentioned it but if you're not familiar with dave king dave king you probably would know him from flogging molly mm-hmm. he formed yeah. that band so. yeah so this was before all of that right there so oh, yeah um, this is 1986 son mm-hmm. 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 like that in 1986 <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a good um so <laughs> so that's pretty much the cast um the movie was made for 3.5 million it made 
almost eight million, yeah. seven nine, if you will. Um, so it, it did turn to profit at it, that time, you know. See, it turned to profit on numbers, but probably Hollywood profit. No, 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 no. <laughs> there was no um, yeah. credence given. Mm-mm. You know the the uh, the the budget was was perfect for the movie. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't really need a lot, and the special effects, of course, were of the time. There there were some special effects that I thought were, and it was just the way they were done mm-hmm. were really good. Yeah, and then there's some where I'm like, oh, <laughs> 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 oh. there's still <laughs> there's still a lot of uh, spit and bail and wire. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, <laughs> it's like, hey, we don't really have a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, can we take that one out? I don't know how to make the sound that my face made when I, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about that, but uh, yeah. Um, but honestly, I mean, I would think that that would be uh, respectable, you know, enough to not to make to Trick n- or Treat two straight to video. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. If it made like twenty million or yeah. something like that, then they would have done a part two. You know, right, they right, would have. Sure. With something like this, is respectable enough, but then. People are like, oh, I didn't make that much money. It Mark sucks. Price, you're not working out here anymore. Go host the kids <laughs> win loot or draw. Yeah, yeah it's 1987. Go make kids doing. Pictionary. Get the hell out of yeah, here. Yeah, get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> turns but, out Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons went on to do great things. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think one of them was in like some band that people for, like. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. What was it? They're band? old now. Piss? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Motley Destructors? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course, Kiss, yes. 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 <laughs> um, so, honestly, this movie just, I don't know, it, the the overall aspect of it being the loner kid with the cool-ass soundtrack, he had the shitty car, you know, the really hot girl that, you know, ended up you know, fallen in love with that he was in love with the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Right from the get go, yeah. you get that. But he just had to show off, you know, that he could like dress like a wackadoodle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Put a bandana around his leg or yeah, something. something. I don't know what that was. Why would you even go to school? You know, if you don't <laughs> care, if you don't care about going to school, what mm. the hell are you showing up for? Good for Leslie. Really? Mm. No, it didn't seem like no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, if I was like, eh, screw school, I'll make it up. I wouldn't even go. Right. No. I mean, of what for? No. We'll talk about that. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, no, I agree. Overall, this movie is really badass. So I guess we can get into the actual uh, movie itself. Sure. Uh, I mean, the effects guy did the Crypt Creep, Crip Keeper and things like that. That's another thing yeah. to kind of um, really kind of throw out there. But okay. So you kind of know the basic plot of everything. So... Eddie Weinbauer's The Outcast. So the very first couple of scenes is basically him getting bullied by, of course, douchebag and all mm-hmm. of his, you know, Aryan brotherhood. Right. You know what I mean? And it's so sad. His Aryan brotherhood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Such dicks. You right. know what I mean? They they mess up his hair. Um, and then it really gets bad. I, I think what they do well is they establish from the beginning how much of a super fan of Sammy Kerr that he is. Yes. You know what I mean? Is that the guy's last name? Yes, yes. Sammy Kerr. Thank you. Yeah. I was just making sure I wasn't like <laughs> Sammy Watkins. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Sammy Kerr. Sammy uh, Davis. Because he's like writing letters to him. Yeah. You know, and he's like signing him Ragman. Yeah, he's got his own name. Yeah. And that's a badass name. Ragman. 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 <laughs> he's fucking cool, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like Bender. Ragman. So he's yeah. like. He's writing those letters. But yeah, then we get to see what him going through, like, just like some of the douchiest stuff, you know? It, um, it, starting yeah. out where they, like, he comes out of the shower and they <sighs> kick his his Walkman out the door. No, they goes, kick the tape out. They kick the tape out, yeah, yeah. And then he goes to grab it. Well, they're wearing his clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, going through his shit. <laughs> That's messed up. Yeah, yeah. Like, so he's writing the letter and he's basically saying this school sucks because Sammy Kerr used to and go the there. the only thing they have there is Leslie. Yeah, and that's the <laughs> only thing that I want. And then, like... Um, yeah, because Sammy Kerr is from the same school. Yeah. Of um, course, he's got to go to gym class and right, take a shower. Right. And in the movies, they always have, like, 30 minutes to get, get dressed and ready. Like, they go <laughs> do athletics for, like, two minutes. And then they shower for, like, 20, right? I mean, look at Carrie. But as they kind of push him out the door, as he's going for that, they kind of push him out the door and grab his towel. So he's completely nude. 
Yes. Wet on the floor. And <laughs> there's a bunch of girls playing volleyball. <laughs> Harambe is out in full effect. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's what he calls his dong. Uh, <laughs> Wow. It was, a, it, was, <laughs> no. it, was a, it was a Harambe dong. Um, so literally, yeah, he's naked and it, the worst shit that could ever happen to you. And of course, he the shut one the door girl and takes locked. the picture. And yeah, and it's locked and it's like slow motion. Like it's just the most soul crushing thing. And then you see Leslie is one of the she people started, playing volleyball and she starts to laugh. Then she's like, wait a minute. Wait, this isn't right. That guy's got a nice ass. <laughs> No, that's, that's what it was. That's what it was. I never understood what that's she it. was attracted that to, was, but that's it. That was it. Mark yeah. Skippy <laughs> Price's sweet ass. Sweet ass. <laughs> Got a great ass. Great ass. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, he's like completely. He's just broken. It's like a nuclear destruction. You but know? what's nice is like the next day. You know, Leslie shows up. She gives him um, the picture. Yeah. You know? The picture and the tape. And the tape. And invites him to a pool oh, party. Yeah, the pool party. Yeah. And he's like, uh... Yeah. She's like, aren't you going to the pool party? He's like, yeah. Pool. Uh, pool <laughs> party. party. Is it pools? Yeah. Party, party at the pool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah so party he, at the moon tower, man. <laughs> so he literally like gets ready, like checks his teeth in the gerbil cage. Yeah, he's getting, he's you like know. pimping as you did in yeah. high school, like when you were going to meet a girl. Yeah, he throws on the Jan Sport, you know, <laughs> puts in a little bitty, puts in like some sort of, you know, I even got a green Jan Sport just because of this. Yeah. <laughs> because of this? I think so. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think his, his was blue. But, uh, <laughs> um, so, and he's, you know, he's wearing his army jacket, right? He's got his, his jeans on and, uh, he walks through. Cause I guess that they, I don't know. Was this the public pool? The indoor I don't pool? know. The indoor public pool, or it's probably the one attached to the gymnasium. Maybe they have a swim team. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. That's so, my guess. Yeah. It was held open by like a, a field house of some sort. Right. Right. Yeah. Held open by a bottle of Bacardi. Yeah. Right. Cause he's got that shitty Oldsmobile. Right. Yeah. You know, um, he, he pulls up in the shitty Oldsmobile. He gets out and he's like, huh, this is weird. And then you go in there and of course all the lights are off, but yet there's enough light for, there's like an orgy going on. Right. It seems like at first, especially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause they're like, like, people like making out right there. And yeah. Like, and and volleyball, oh, yeah. you know, shirtless girls, volleyball, and then guess who's standing in the middle? Tim. Yes, dickhead. And um, he's like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> he's like, "Nothing." <laughs> and and it's weird because he doesn't. He's he doesn't very, say. He's, he's very socially awkward. Yeah, and he says, "I'm here. I'm meeting somebody," and they ask him who, and he never says anything. No, yeah, no. I mean, he's confronted because he's got the Aryan Brotherhood right in front of him, and then the girlfriend of the Aryan Brotherhood. Walks up mm-hmm. and is like, you know, um, what was it? Um, do you is something maintaining your this level of creepiness? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get tired of maintaining this <laughs> level of creepiness? He's like, what? <laughs> creepiness? You know, yeah. like it's weird. And yeah. then of course, home dude's like, get him the fuck out of here. Right, right. So they they literally put and a this weight. is where we have attempted murder. Yes, this yeah. is an <sighs> attempted murder. Not hazing. No. They wanted to kill this dude. So they put a weight in his backpack. And then push threw him, him in. Yeah. Threw him in the pool. Yeah. Um, which he was struggling to get get out of it. Because but the backpack's apparently too small for him. Because <laughs> he's, he's like... <laughs> Well, like, he's like T Rex in it, right? You know what I mean. He's too, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's two strapping it. Yeah, back yeah. in the day when you one strapped it, right? Exactly, you know what I mean. Exactly. He was two strapping it, and he and they put that weight in there, which I've never seen a weight like that at any pool that I've ever gone no, to. I don't know why there ever. would be a weight there. Well, it was holding up like the the ropes that go across. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it was there for, right? Gotcha. Um, to mark where the deep end started, I, I guess. Well, that seems dumb. <laughs> yeah, to have a weight there. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, no. At any rate, yeah. At any rate, they push him into the deep end. And he he starts saves him, buddy. Leslie. Leslie dives in that water. Takes his backpack. He's struggling. He's struggling. He's like having a hard, hard time. He's gonna drown. He's gonna drown because nobody's gonna get him. And they're gonna be like, oh shit, Eddie Weinbauer. And then Phil Collins is gonna write a song about it. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, So (laughs) so she gets him. 
right? And she's like, hey, you know, what's the matter? And he's like, they fucking tried to kill me, man. Those guys. Well, he even kind of flips out on her. He's like, yeah. Are you part of it or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You think this is just, uh, I don't care. I'm going to get those. And assholes. he's like all soggy. Yeah. You know, because you know, he got out of the squish, pool squish. and it runs or walks, trudges. Let's, <laughs> yeah. Yes. He trudges over his Chuck to Taylor's. his Oldsmobile. <laughs> The old shitty Oldsmobile. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, man, she gets all a little indignant. She's like, what's the matter? Uh, attempted I, murder? I almost died. <laughs> yeah. I think they tried to drown me. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't. Mm-hmm. You know, at first she was like, ah, is it my fault? My mom had the car. I had to wait for that. Yeah. Whatever. She was watching. <laughs> She, she went, handed him the weight. Yeah. <laughs> it was really her. <laughs> not true. I mean, no, you, know, no, you no. can infer what you want from this movie. <laughs> but, um, okay, so so, so we, we, should, did, we we did kind of skip over like yeah. the whole part about. So th- that's just a background of who he, uh, yeah, like that his, kinda, his that's high school showing life. That right there. Yeah. And then what happens is, of course, you know, he's really into Sammy Kerr. Yeah. And he finds out that Sammy Kerr died. Yes. And he sees him on TV while he's doing laundry and eating cookies. And well, this is where we get a little more of the story about Sammy Kerr because it's um, basically like they're showing all the news stuff from Sammy Kerr's. Right. Because like, he was recently trying to do a show on Halloween at his old school. At the high school. Right. On and, Halloween night. Right. And they uh, said no. Yeah, they were like, no. But man. then they started showing some of his act, and he's like ripping a snake in half yeah, like, and rubbing the blood all over him. Put it in his mouth and yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like, like this I, guy no. is pretty hardcore. Yeah, I don't think he needs to be doing a quinceanera or anything. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> That's just not where he needs to be. No, no, you know? I agree. <laughs> not even awake. But he dies in a fire. A hotel fire. Hotel fire. But it's a mysterious hotel fire. Well, of course it is. Wouldn't be yeah. much of a movie if it wasn't. So he's like completely devastated, right? And I guess really the only other friend that he has besides his mom and, and the other dude, oh, right? Yeah, is Nuke. Nuke, yeah. So and well, I think for his, you know, his love of music, he's there. That's yeah. how music. I mean, that makes sense that he would befriend them. You know, yeah. And Nuke knows Sammy Kerr. Yeah, you know what I mean. They went to school together. They went to school together. Right. They're about the same age and everything like that. And you know, Nuke, Nuke is a little, I mean, he's like over the top. And I really think Gene Simmons did a great job at acting in this. And I don't know why I thought he, he did, did a good fine. job. Yeah. He did fine. I mean, he was probably the best actor in this movie. I would almost say, <laughs> you know, for really what he did, him and Ozzy really kicked ass in it. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. <laughs> but uh, They're Mike, Mark Price level, yeah. Right, right. So he's the cowboy hat wearing heavy metal dude, right? Yeah, yeah. For the only the heavy metal. Yeah. yeah. Which the uh, radio station is out in the country, too. Yeah. That's cool. As it was, I think, back in the day, like before everything, a lot of times, you know. Right, right. Except Unless for you're shocker. in a big city yeah, or something, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that was in California, right? I think so. Yeah. This was in Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah. So that's how it worked. <laughs> yeah. It's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so so he goes in there and he's like, man, I can't believe it. And he's like, you can't, you can't believe in this rock warrior bullshit. Right. Right. Because he was like, he, I mean, he really looked up to him because he was there. He made it through. And he's going through he the same shit. He identified with the lyrics. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything. As he, you do when you're in high school, you know. His whole life was nothing but Sammy Kerr. Right. And Sammy uh-huh. Kerr was just wicked and of course you know nukes like he was troubled to begin with right you know and then he kind of and this is where my main theory of how everything starts um I and think why it starts tries to talk him out of it right yes well he's like he's like hey then he's like oh nope this is for you yeah he's like hmm yeah he sees something in him that kind of opens him up to be like all right Maybe I'll help you out. So he pulls out a, a LP, right? And it's Sammy Kerr's uh, and his band's last record. And it's the only one in existence. It's an acetate. It's right. an acetate demo. So it's thicker than normal. It's like the 180 grams, I guess, now yeah, or yeah. something like that, right? So it was the first one pressed. Right. But they sent it in advance to Nuke show. Because he was supposed to be doing the high school right. deal. Right. But he was going to defy that shit and right. still play it on Halloween right. at midnight over the radio. And he had it recorded onto tapes. That's right. So, so he, he gives him the, the actual record. The actual LP, you know? Right. So, of course, you know, after the uh, the whole incident with the um, 
the pool party and everything. He goes home and of course, you know, he's chilling and he's got the most badass room. I think that yeah, a teenager cool could room, ever yeah. have. I mean, it's like a loft is above a garage or something. I don't even know how that house no, I works. I think it's attached to that. I don't know. It's, it's weird, it, yeah. when you look at the house, you're like, hmm, where's Maybe the other is. part? Maybe it is. Might be. I don't know. I don't, it's like a top level because there's two levels because his mom was like working out in one of the rooms. Right. Like <laughs> she's got the little bitty room. <laughs> That's crazy. I never noticed that. Um, she's got that little bitty room where she's doing her jazzercise and shit mm-hmm. beside the bed. And he's got this giant <laughs> fucking room, right? It's like the size of, um, I don't know. I don't know the best way to put it. It's like a three. It's a good size room. Yeah, a two car garage um, with no ceiling. Yeah, it's like um, Kirk Cameron's room from Growing Pains. Yes. Yes. Or Uncle Jesse's room, too. Yeah, Uncle yeah. Jesse's room. They're really big yeah. at the top. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, you know, he sits down and then all of a sudden he starts the record stretch playing, right? But then he passes out. But then all of a sudden, the record is playing this. Ri- what I ri- like is the the dream sequence that he has here, the sort of dream. But he's actually going into the hotel, like the, when it was on fire. Yeah. And you see Sammy Kerr there, and they're obviously doing some sort of ritual. There's other people there. People are all on fire. fire and shit. And yeah. he's like, I, I assume saying the incantation that you hear that intros the movie. Yeah. You know? It start back in the night. <laughs> I suck back. In the night. <laughs> so he wakes up in the middle of it because he's like, holy shit. Um, and then he hears that. And so he just walks over to the record and he starts playing it backwards. Yep. And it's like, oh, um, you are the bait. <laughs> <laughs> so he gives him a little tip and he's like, whoa, hold on. I can get them back. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I mean, just that little bitty couple of sentences that he says is basically like, hey, it's like I'm an get epiphany. Yeah. yeah. He's like, holy crap. So the next day is his time. That's right. To get um, the Aryan Brotherhood back, right? I love that it starts out and he's just moving stuff around in the <laughs> yes. hallway. Nobody else is in there. He's like, oh, I'm going to move this mop bucket here. Yeah, but you know, a janitor would walk by and be like, who the hell? What kind of kid just moves my mop bucket <laughs> into the middle of the deal? God. Damn stupid kids. So he walks up to, to home, dude, right? And he's cocky about it. He puts his foot up on the, you know, the seat thing there. <laughs> and of course, home dude's like, look, it's Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. Yeah. No shit, right? He's got some good. I would have probably said that too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have tried to kill the guy. I'm yeah, just yeah. saying. Though. Yeah. And I mean, so he he's like, you know what? Fuck you, yeah. pretty much. And he throws the damn um, the tray full of food on there because, of course, they're too cool to eat. You know, at lunch they had sushi or something. So, and then he runs across the table. Right. Then we start seeing why he has everything set up. That's right. So they, uh, the Aryan Brotherhood chases <laughs> him down. <laughs> but they're like the, the, these guys the, are jocks. The Aryan prep. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever. It, yeah. Every, not, not that they're Aryan yeah. Brotherhood. They're not Nazis. They're yeah. what, but they're white Aryan, dudes. Yeah, preppy hoods. They're preppy white dudes that are very stereotypical. Yes. Yeah. This is a huge school, come to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because um everything is set up perfectly. So like yeah, like they're running into the chair that he put there, they run yeah. into the mop bucket. The dude jumps over the bomb. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then he he like launches out the back one of the back doors. Over the stairs. <laughs> Yes. That guy's got a broken back or a broken hip, something, yeah. dude. <laughs> he's like, he's, it's recovery. You know what I mean? There's no way he got up after that shit. <laughs> he got menudo. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> so, so finally, they think they got him, and he's like ditched almost all of them except for three of them. Right, and they're so following him. They're following, him and they see this door shut, and they're like, mm, yeah. Instead of killing him, we're going to spray him with water. You yeah, know, so they get the fire extinguisher. Yeah, because he's Aquaman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they kick open the door, start spraying it, and it's like freaking the teacher's out because yeah. it's the teacher's lounge. It's like the secret teacher's lounge because like they wouldn't know where the teacher's lounge was in the school. Exactly. <laughs> this was like the back room where they did coke or something <laughs> like that. Like, like they the have one the- lady's like – 
Behold me. <laughs> yes. She's like, oh my, she's traumatized. Because because these three white dudes, you know, that are sweaty, you know, and they're athletes. And out of breath. Right. They're completely, totally athletes and they couldn't catch him. No. Dude, it's if quick. I would have done that in high school, I would have got my ass kicked. <laughs> I wouldn't have made it out of the lunchroom. You know what I mean? I would have got tripped or fell down or like. I don't know, ran into the wall or something on accident or that pole that goes right in the middle. <laughs> you know, the double doors is like, oh, I, do. oh, I broke my of- hand on one of those doing a spinning back fist. <laughs> Ouch. Looked really good though. <laughs> Till my hand was hurt. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> Don't want him to see the pain. <laughs> no. um, but, but anyways, yeah. Yeah, so he but he gets away and they get, you know, they're fucked because they just like sprayed a bunch of teachers with, <laughs> with water. <laughs> yes, with some water, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and traumatize them, obviously. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's a connection to Back to the Future. Yeah. Because they had the same kind of a deal almost. Yeah. Fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Michael J. <laughs> Fox and Skippy together. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so of course, you know, they get fucked, yeah. but he, he brings his friend Roger over, Yeah, which is the other nerdy dude, but he's not the metalhead kind of nerdy no. dude. Yeah. It sounds like he, he's like more of a D and D nerd. Yeah. But obviously he listens to metal. Right. 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 You know, he, he just they seems have a, a little, conversation about it. yeah, he has a, he has a little bit more like, I don't know. He's almost like Star Trek kind yeah. of a dude um but not really you know yeah. I, I don't know it's, it's, he's a weirdo yeah he's a nerd um, as we see when he's looking up the girl's dress later yeah right <laughs> so he's and and he's like what do you think man and he's like loud thrashing and you know brutal <laughs> he's like no man did you not hear that part and he's like you know what that was uh, you you falling for the oldest trick in the book <laughs> you know you know some record exec wanted you to they want to place hidden lyrics in music and that way you would ruin your record and go buy another one. Yep. So he's like, whatever, you know, this was meant for me. And I finally got those douchebags. You know right. what I mean? Of course, Roger's like, whatever, dude, later. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, cause he does have it recorded backwards. I think because whenever he's in the car driving away, it yeah. sounds like the, Music is going backwards. Oh no! I think he 100 percent did record yeah. it, and he, it doesn't. He doesn't just record it. It like kind of does everything itself. Yeah. Well, and he's like got that super, super fast. Yeah, that <laughs> super badass thing. Yeah. And and I bet you that was something. But that was at least a thousand dollars worth of stereo oh, equipment back that. then. More than that. You think? Yeah, absolutely. Because a thousand dollars back in 1986 was a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So each one, well, I, probably 5,000, huh? <laughs> each know. component was probably a thousand. Well, I don't think that each component was a thousand, but he had a lot of components. Mm-hmm. And I, I could see that being like a three thousand, two yeah. to three thousand dollar stereo. Plus system. he had really awesome. 1986. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, plus he had really awesome records, everything like that. That's right. In, plus the speakers, you know what I mean? Right. So, right. So he, I mean, how else are you going to fill the cathedral that is his room? That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean. I don't feel sorry for this bastard at all. <laughs> no, man. He had everything. His mom was probably a waitress. Except for his Oldsmobile, I guess. I guess, right? I but he eh. Reminded me of my first car a little bit. <laughs> Everybody's first car was kind of like that, I guess. <laughs> but, um. So for some re- for some reason he's alone in the room, but he's just like whatever, you know. So he keeps trying to play it backwards. Then all of a sudden it starts playing by itself, right? You know, it's like it starts calling him by name. Yeah, calls him Ragman. Yeah, Ragman. He's like, whoa, what the hell? It is for me. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. So everything's just kind of like all messed up and everything like that. Um. Uh. It gets more evil because he's like, hey, you need to kill those. Fuck them. Well, you know? Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> nail them <laughs> all. Nail them <laughs> all. Fuck them. <laughs> but doesn't it give him like some number and then that's the room he's in next? Yes. Um, six, like a six, shop six, room. Yeah, 6-6 six, six Crush or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay, all right. You know, and he um, goes in there with his headphones on, he's eating his lunch. Turns on the the Walkman, eats a Twinkie. He's yeah. like, I ain't gonna eat this damn sandwich. I have the Twinkie, <laughs> right? He's wearing his badass alternative tentacles T shirt. 
Which Brock owns. I, I mean, not awesome. the one that Mark Price had on. That would but. be bitching. Come on. Skippy sweat? I don't no, know. No, man. <laughs> I'd wash it and put it in a frame. <laughs> <laughs> all, we all know who alternative tentacles are. <laughs> okay. So he's in the shop room, which the shop room is closed. Well, yeah. There's nobody in there. <laughs> closed for business. Yeah. There's no mm-hmm. teachers. There's yeah. no lights it's on. It's an off period. must be you know, it's yeah. lunchtime. So maybe yeah. the, that teacher's at lunch. And of course, home dude comes in. Tim Haney. And he's wearing his jeans and boots. You and know, a tie. And a tie. So he's like beating the nineties in they, this. They had to they had to dress up nice to go talk to the principal. <laughs> yeah. They had to clean up um uh they had to clean up desks all first period or something like that. Yeah, he's like, Yeah, how much stuff's underneath there? <laughs> yeah. You you won't imagine what's under people's desks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he flips the damn thing. Here he is being a, a jock. He grabs the desk and flips him over. Right. right? And then he, he's like, How can you listen to this shit? And he kicks the freaking Walkman and it starts playing. Right. The whole time. Then he launches him across the shop room floor. Yeah, he does. I mean, it's a good 20 yards to the wall. <laughs> and I don't know about 20 yards, but it's... it's it seemed like it for <laughs> yeah. real because, I mean, he throws him like like he was King Kong. Well, I mean, he's an athlete. Well, I guess. He's yeah. just not a fast one. No, uh, no. <laughs> so it's, That's not his cup of tea. Yeah. So I mean, on. Arnold Schwarzenegger's an athlete, and I don't... I would rather him chase me than try to arm wrestle me. Right, right, right. <laughs> you might be able to outrun Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. You know Even I mean? in his pro- – you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, just yeah. a bulky dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he slides on the ground and hits his head, you know, on the cement wall. And home dude is just taunting him. Oh, he's, he's, such like, a, he's like taking wrenches yeah. and like throwing them, not at him, but not – Around him. Around him. To scare the shit out of him. Right. Right. So Eddie's like sitting there like, holy shit, you know, I'm going to get the ass kicking in my life, but not really because I got Sammy on my side. Right? Because this douchebag wore a tie with jeans and boots. Right. <laughs> yeah. So he leans over, over the lathe. As you do. To grab another wrench. Right. And the the best line, do you think I'm a wussy fucking weak tit? <laughs> Love it. Um, so. <laughs> really struggling for that. uh <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I didn't think that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking just now. <laughs> yeah, you're just an asshole. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it gets caught in the lathe. Yeah, and it's going straight towards his eye. Yeah, it's got him all pulled down with the lathe going towards his eye. And Skippy doesn't immediately turn this thing off. No, he gets up, he kind of wipes the blood off. The dude, <clears throat> I guess the room is thin. <laughs> right? Because the other dude's like, the sparks are flying out of it. And he's like, ah. <laughs> you know my hair. He's, my a, good, hair. he's a good friend. <laughs> yeah, my hair. <laughs> well, he had so much gel in it, probably. <laughs> yeah, moss, moss, <laughs> or moose. I'm sorry, <laughs> moose. It would have been moose. Yeah, 1980s. He's my like, uh, my shit ain't going up with this aqua net <laughs> in it. You I ain't Michael I mean? Jackson and up in here. <laughs> Look <Yeah>. back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he eventually walks up, and of course, he kills power. Yeah, he's like, you need to stay the fuck away from me. You know, you're crazy, man. What? You were just throwing wrenches at me. Yeah. You threw me across the room. You tried to kill me two days ago. Technically, I just saved your life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe we should hang out. <laughs> you know? You got a cool car? Cool. Let's go drive. Right. Let's go drink some beers, bro. Um. So, yeah, they get into that little tussle, and he's like, yes. Right? So, and that's when he's driving home, and he's like, yeah, yeah, and he's banging on the wheel and everything He's running like that. through stoplights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That might have been after the first time he got home. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, but then, so he goes back home, and he's like, all right, man, you know, we we did it. And he's like, no, we did. You know, Sammy's like, we didn't do nothing. Right. And we need to get them all. We need to do everything. So it started getting a little, little heavier and everything. Right. right? So that's when, you know, it starts doing its own thing and it's and it's actually impersonating his voice. To try to get his mom to come in there. Mom, can you come in? He's like, no, mom, don't come in. <laughs> she goes outside and he's like, you're sweating. Uh, yeah, I don't feel too good. Uh, can I have some aspirin? <laughs> and some soup? <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. She's like, okay. Scores. Yeah. <laughs> 
his mom must be independently rich or maybe something. Just something. Maybe maybe the father passed. That's left what left him a you know a hefty sum or something yeah, like that. Some sort of insurance. Yeah, I could see that. Something because we don't see the father. Not at all. Yeah, yeah we see the boyfriend. Yeah, the little, <laughs> the little dude in his Rambo helmet. <laughs> yeah. Make my day. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> um, so basically, everything starts going crazy, and he's like. Screw this. I'm going to unplug the thing. Yeah. That throws him another 20 yards across the room. Yes. Because that's about, no, nah, that's probably 10 yards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the air, and he doesn't land on the bed either. No. I mean, he was so close to it, too. <laughs> I mean, Missed that like, by oh. that much. And he's like right in front of the <laughs> boom. And of course, that's when Sammy comes out. That's right. Um, because we did And this it. is some of the special effects I like is when he's in the speaker. And it's nothing special. It's no. just cool. Yeah. It, it looks good. Just like the um, Nightmare on Elm Street, wherever yeah. he's in the wall and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. So awesome on that part of it. It's so creepy. And this is so creepy, too. It's like he's busting out. But then he does get out. And it's Sammy Kerr. But he's all, like, messed up. And he's got his, you know, his leathers on. Everything's all, like, torn up and shit like that. He's all, yeah, his scarred face, like. Like it's half burned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's half Freddy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like a mix. But he's still of, got gray hair. A mix of Nikki Six <laughs> and Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Nikki Six and Freddy. He's still got lipstick on, too. Yeah. Well, as you do. And trailer. eyeliner. Yeah. Maybe it's Maybelline. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe he's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> uh, that could be it. <laughs> um, but his, he, his hair's still great. You know, his high heels are awesome. He, he jumps and spins. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically he's like, you you can't get out of this shit. Yeah. You know, we're doing this together. I'm still going to do this. You can't stop me. Anything like that, right? And he's right, like, right. whatever. So, of course, you know, he has that. Well, this is before. He has a tape, right? Right. Um, and he gives it to Roger. And he's like, hey, it's a peace offering. Let's be cool. To Roger. Or home dude. To Tim. Yeah, yeah to Tim. He so leaves he, it in his locker, right? Right, right. And he's like, hey, here's a peace offering. And he's like, whatever. And he throws, crumples it. So, um, Doesn't he put the tape in his back pocket? Yeah. yeah. So Tim's like, um, I don't know what he's doing with that girl in the cut dog, right? You know, in the cutlass. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like a cutlass supreme. They're getting it on, right? But he's like, I gotta pee. He seems like he's like real drunk or something. Right, like, right. And she's like, oh whatever so it's the girl that took the picture of him right right and um so she sees the silver tape and, and the like, one that confronted him at the pool right yeah, right yeah. and she's a so she puts the tape in right and she's like chilling and it's pretty soon uh a demon comes out of the tape the green tape starts to kind of like mess around with mm -hmm. her it's uh definitely doing something it's his um it's, uh, it's basic it's basically a, music rape. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And it's Sammy Kerr's demon that he that is attached to him. Skeezix, right? Skeezix, yeah, some, yeah. Something weird like that, right? Um so And we do like you you've mentioned to me before that we see that that poster that he has. And this was actually like once this was made, everybody, like the director, was like, I really wish we would have had more time with that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, to kind of give it a little bit more backstory. Because in mm -hmm. the poster, you can see the Skeezix monster or demon on his chest. chest yeah. Um, which it doesn't even look like Tony Fields in that picture. And mm -hmm. that's why it always confused me. Because <laughs> I was like, that's not the same dude. You know what I mean? Right. It just it Just the angle that it was at and then the, the type of picture that was taken, everything like that, right? And... Um, so Skeezix comes out and literally like kills that chick, right? Right. So Tim took like the endless pee, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, he was gone for a long time. He didn't even know that his girl was getting it on with a demon. Yeah. Well, he was too drunk on cherry coolers. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> the cut dog had everything in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but just no er uh, Erica Aliniac. Um, so, so basically, he goes in there and he pulls the uh, headphones off and he's like, what is it? What was she listening to? Of course, it's the tape. Right. And he's like, Weinbauer. Mm -hmm. And he goes out there, right, to his, to his house. To his house, yeah. And, you know, he does the whole pontification, you know, like puts his hand out to make him stop. He's like, what'd you do to Jeannie? She's almost dead. She's, I guess she's in a coma. 
right? Yeah. So she doesn't die, no. but her ears are melted. So that mm. kind of sucks. Um, she might want to be dead, you know? Um, so, of course, you know, it kind of shows this weird power that he has that the, the flames come up through the pumpkins and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like he's able to control that. When yeah. He- and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, I mean, he goes to school. What was it? Because he basically tells tells Sammy, you know, at that point, that's when he comes out. It's like, hey, no, no more. You almost killed somebody. I can't do this anymore. Right. I know you're stuck with me, Bagman. We're going to do this, right? Right. So the next day, you know, he's trying to make it up to his mom, I guess, by staying home. For yeah, Halloween. he's like doing the, well, I think he, I think she tells him, isn't he grounded or something? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then he, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to hang out here. Yeah. So he calls Roger. Yeah. You know, he's like, hey, man, I need you to do something for me. He's like, what? So Roger has to go pull, you know, a Mission Impossible and go get the tape from his back back seat. Right. Right. So um, Tim's back yeah, seat. The, uh, yeah. The, the cut dog. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> the Cutlass Supreme. Yeah. Um, so he, you can see him trying to <laughs> Jerry. Rig Listen, it. That's a great scene because he's like just sitting there with the coat hanger trying to get the thing <laughs> yeah. and then realizes it's unlocked. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> ah. It's like, and he's all dressed in black and it's daytime. <laughs> yes. He's got a hood on and everything. And like, this is a big giant house too. So this dude's really rich, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but he's He's the person in, you're supposed to hate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they have a big spread and everything like that. But he's yet he's parked like, I don't know, a hundred yards away from the house. Right. Why am I equating everything to yards? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's 14 pallets away. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> I, I heard he weighed five stones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, of course, Roger grabs it and then he gets on his bike and starts pedaling. Right. And then all of a sudden it kicks on. <laughs> like he's got a cool motorcycle, right? Yeah. It's yeah. pretty awesome, right? Um, I've always wanted to find one of those two for some reason. <laughs> um, but so he gets a tape. Like a and, moped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he calls him. He's like, so what's on it? He's like, did you destroy it? He's, he's like, like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. So he's making a milkshake, right? Like, it looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> like a big one. Like a full. He being Roger. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Roger. And he's got the music playing on it, right? And the TV's on and everything like that. But then all of a sudden there's like an electrical. <laughs> Like a big surge. He's like, what the hell? And it turns on the freaking it's blender. Milkshake everywhere. <laughs> Milk's going everywhere. <laughs> chocolate's everywhere. He's like, what the hell? He goes into the living room. Who's there? You know it's Sammy Kerr. Sammy Kerr. So Sammy's like, play my tape tonight. <laughs> and uh, he then, he, then mm-hmm. he rips a old lady out of the TV yeah. to show his power. Yeah, so it goes back. And we didn't really mention that earlier about the... Ozzy and the televangelist thing. Yeah, they they kind of they, they they pepper that in there. Yeah, yeah throughout. throughout. And it's like going on the whole time. There's this big controversy of <laughs> <laughs> all of this weird. I don't know. And it's on everything. It's Rock like and on, roll. Yeah, it's everything evil stuff. Yeah. yeah. So every news station is covering it, and they're doing stuff. And that and he woman, does just pull her out, and she comes out like crispy. Yeah, she's like a chicken nugget yeah, or some shit. Came right? through the electricity, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I, know. I don't know how that works, but... Maybe he's like related to Horace Pinker. Or, yeah, Wonka Vision. Yeah. That is Wonka Vision yeah. right there. Like, <laughs> What was that kid's name? Billy TV or whatever? Yeah, something like that. Johnny, <laughs> Johnny TV. TV. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Midnight. I don't know. <laughs> so he throws her down. And, of course, Roger's trying to vacuum it up <laughs> instead of picking up the big pieces, right? <laughs> And it's his parents' hi-fi stereo and everything like that, right? So, you know, um, Eddie's at home, and he's still chilling. And guess who calls? Leslie. Leslie. She's like, hey, are you coming to the dance? He's like, I don't know. I got to stay home, you know? <laughs> you know, he's kind of like, coy. Yeah, he's like flirting, you know, because his mom's gone and everything right. like that. And he's like, oh, that's really cool you're calling me. How do you get my number? You know <laughs> what I mean? How that happened? Because there's phone books. It's right. 1986. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> She's worried about him because he I, made. I, I dialed information. Yeah, because he made fun of her her jeans. He's like, "What are you wearing?" She's like, "Jeans." Oh, they're you. They're you. That was when he what? was all dressed up, yeah. all stupid. <laughs> yeah, and Roger was looking up the cheerleaders. You know, mm. bloomers. Uh, <laughs> bloomers. <laughs> yeah. What are you like? Ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they call them, for real. 
Sure. <laughs> I no, no, for real. Like cheerleaders have bloomers. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and no argument. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, he's at home. He's talking to her. And then he's like, hey, wait a minute. What's that playing in the background? Because Roger has gone in and taken over the jam box and played his tape, right? As Sammy told him to. Because uh-huh, he was going to kill him if he didn't do right. it. Right. So he's like, shit, I'll do it. So he goes in there, he puts the tape in, of course, and he's like, oh, my God. So he runs outside, you know, and what happens? <laughs> he's, like, going towards the dance, and he gets into his car, and oh. when he turns it on, the tape's in there. Right. He's like, where are you going, Eddie? <laughs> and he takes over the car, and then they do this whole, like, you know, no chase scene. Right. Which um, Sammy's taking over, like, the the drive. Um, all the electrical system, but yeah, he could do everything. And the door can open up by himself. Right, right, right. <laughs> he goes under like a semi it's like, trailer. It's like Herbie. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, he, he, um, yeah, he, he does take the top of it off. Yeah, he finally figures mm-hmm. out how to kill the stereo. So he does. And then the car slowly rolls to a stop, but then goes, Poof! so kind of falls down a little bit. He opens the door and it's an unfinished bridge. Yeah, he would have died right there. Right. <laughs> And Sammy Kerr would have been loose on the world. Would he have died, though? Who? See, um, Skippy? Eddie? Yeah, seeing as, you know, how we've already seen the, the ending of this. Yeah, but, yeah, well, maybe, maybe not. This will tie back. Yes. Okay. So Eddie gets out of his car. He goes straight to the dance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but while he's on his way there, this is one we're going to get, you know, the special effects guy was actually the lead singer of the band, the kickers. Yes. <laughs> he was, in fact. So, of course, Charles Martin Smith is the principal. And he's like, you guys don't want to hear me talking. Can you turn that off? And Roger's like hawking the uh, the damn uh, jam box, right? The boom box. And, um, of course, Leslie's, she's thinking about leaving and everything like that. So, I think she's back. Going know. to meet Eddie. Yeah. She's like, ah, screw this. I don't want to be here. Well, doesn't she go? Are we where, at the point where she goes to the bathroom? Well, she yeah, she's around there. Okay. You know, it's around that time. Uh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're going to. So, so the dude's like, man, my feedback's pretty weird. You know, and of course, he's got the big, you know, hair and everything like that. And uh, I, I make up and shit. Yeah, yeah. It looks like uh, poison. Right, right. <laughs> and Molly the, crew, whatever. Yeah, and the backup band is pretty kick-ass. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I mean, these guys nail it. Like the bass player freaking knows the the key, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like key of A. We're playing mm-hmm. it. So because um he reaches to his Marsha amp, right? <laughs> and the thing explodes and then the guitar is like flying in the air, right? Right. Who catches it? Sammy Kerr. And so he's got the the guitar strapped on, right? And he starts doing a beat on his leg. And the drum's like do 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 and then all of a sudden, the bass player is like, key of G. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guitar player knows exactly where to go. It's like, dun, dun, dun. and it's all, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> then they play the trick or treat song, right? That's right. Dude, he's twirling, he's yeah, yeah. back flipping, everything like that, right? Is, the dude is kicking ass. He is solid golden all over the place. And no shit, right? I mean, like, he's badass, right? And then he goes into a solo. Yep. And, um, of course he has his guitar on sometimes he has his guitar off sometimes it's like, it's, you know, transmutating or transubstantiating or something like that. Right. So of course the band's like, damn, we're playing with this dude. It's like, I guess he's like Sammy Kerr. I don't know. So I think the stuff that happens in the bathroom happens right before Sammy Kerr comes out with, uh, Leslie and Tim. No, that happens after I think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because he he um she she's running away and he's running after her and then Maybe Sammy goes right. into the hallway. Yeah, yeah. So of course, this whole time right. they're they're playing one of Sammy Kerr's song and the one, one girl's out there is like he's even better than the real Sammy, <laughs> you know. And then he starts shooting his electric guitar. The first thing that happens, guess what? The bass player is like. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm out. Deuces. <laughs> and I mean, he doesn't even unplug. <laughs> I mean, that's one smart bass player. Right. You know, he's like, whoa. <laughs> Drummer's right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <Hot. laughs> go, go, go. And then he starts jumping around. 
He's like jumping over the yeah. entire gym. Yeah. He's jumping over from, from freaking basketball goal to basketball goal. Yeah. Scaring yeah. the shit out of people after he destroys Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he's up on the wall. That's like the first one he does. Yeah. Because he's like shooting laser bolts, <clears throat> you know, electric bolts out of there. And he's like disintegrating people. Yeah. yeah. What's awesome is that while that's happening, like – People are still rocking out. <laughs> yes. And like the people next to him just like disintegrate. They're like, yeah, rocking <laughs> out. And I'm like, <laughs> until somebody is that finally. Angel does that you're on. <laughs> <laughs> somebody finally is like, no, right? run. So they, everybody's leaving, right? Trying to. And Sammy's like doing the deal where he's like, you know, hanging from the rafters and stuff yeah. like that and like swinging from some gym rope or some shit like that, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> So he actually lands, right? And then the clown's standing and they're like, well, which way, which way? I'm going to die. And then he runs off. That was just so weird. It was weird. Because he does destroy the, the principal. Yeah. You know, because you see the, the glass. Which is actually the dire- um, director of this yeah, film. Yeah, Charles Martin Smith. Yeah. And so, of course, you know, Eddie shows up outside. Right. The cops are all there. Everything's kind of going crazy. And they're like, we need to check the party punch. <laughs> like, come on, for real? <laughs> It's like, no, it was a real Sammy Kerr, and he came out, and they did this. And then, you know, Eddie's in there. So he goes in. He finds the tape. He destroys it. And then that's whenever he's looking for Leslie. You know, yeah. he's like, Leslie, because he, he can't find her outside, anything like that, right? right. Um, so Roger's already deuced, you think, right? Right. He's already out. Because um, he's like, hey, you need to shut the power off. And he's like, uh, okay. <laughs> Where do I do that at? Yeah. <laughs> this is a huge-ass school, right? Right. Like, how does he know where the main junction box is, right? Right. I guess. I don't know. (laughs) So, um, of course, he's walking down the hall, and there's Tim, right? Right. But Tim almost tries to rape Leslie. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, we've done it once. Mm -hmm. She's like, get off of me, douchebag. Right. Uh, (laughs) So, so basically, um, he's... uh, He's out in the hall. He's like, Weinbauer, leave me the hell alone. I mean, what are you doing here? And he's like, no, you need to leave now. And, of course, he, um, Sammy comes out of the freaking electrical socket. Right. He's like, what? And then, he, um, of course, he picks up Tim, licks his finger, <laughs> and Horace Pinker's that shit. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, freaking got him by the neck and, like, uh-huh. blows him up, right? Yep. So, of course, you know, um, he's running – Basically, they they're running away from Sammy, but he's you know, he's in the electrical system because there's nothing out. They're, right. Uh, him and Leslie are kind of going all over the place, right? right? And that's when they get cornered, right? They get cornered because the door's locked. Right. It's got chains on it and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that generator, conveniently, yeah, right next to the power supply, like right? A circuit board or whatever, and it a is. speaker. Yeah. <laughs> so he's so, like, "Hey, man, we had a deal." <laughs> <laughs> I just love his delivery yeah, on that. Yeah, it's pretty we had good. A deal. Uh, and, and of course, Roger comes up right behind him. And this is a cool effect too. Cause he, he, Roger is like about to destroy the thing with the crowbar. Where he got that? I don't know. So he, he jams it into the deal and Sammy's about to like slice him. Yeah. But then he like disappears right in Dissipate, the slice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and of course, and he thinks, Oh man, Roger, you're dead. And he's like, actually. I'm alive. <laughs> you know, so, so they get I'm outside. I'm looking up your skirt now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking up your skirt, Leslie. Uh, um, so, so the next part, they're, they're basically outside. And of course, one of the Aryans is like, it's him. He's the one that's been acting weird. Like he's talking shit about him. Right. It's like saying he's the cause of all to of the this. cops. Yeah, right. He was at home. Right. You know, I mean, I don't know what the hell, right? Well, you know. So they, they're like, hey, you, stop. And he's like, fuck you. <laughs> he bolts out of that freaking place. Yeah. And then Leslie's like, I'm coming with you. Okay. And that's when we get a good view of downtown, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're kind of walking, you know, um, through, or they're running through the town. They get to an alley. Stop. Tell me what's going on. You won't believe me. And then he starts to tell her. And she's like, what? And he's like, I told you you wouldn't believe me. Right. You know, that's just dumb. She didn't get to witness all that stuff no. except for the very end. So right. she's just like, what the fuck, right? Um, so he's like, oh, I forgot they're going to play it at midnight. Yep. Jesus Christ. How are we going to get there? Well, we need to go back to my house, get my mom's car. Right. Okay. And we get the announcement, not only is it playing at at midnight, but he's playing it backwards for the first song or something. Yeah, the first song is going to be played backwards. In honor. And this is where I think Nuke 
and Sammy were in this together because Nuke was not there. Right. He it was on tape. It was pre-recorded, ready to go, and, and Nuke was out. gone. Right. So, and I don't, I don't think he would have stayed around till midnight unless it was like really really super important. Right. Right. So he's not there. So that's why I think. And like we were saying earlier at the very beginning, he gave him the record. Right. Like at first he was like, maybe. And then he really saw the the passion in him. He was like, you know what? I'm going to give him this. Because I think Sammy probably talked to him. Yeah. You know, whenever he played the record the first time, was like, hey, new. And he's like, what? <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> you're, you're here. You know, so. Get me to the rag, man. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it's like he didn't want to do it, but then he was like, let's see what happens you know what i mean i'll unleash him first and kind of let this dude get his um get revenge on all these other people right you know they'll get their comeuppance and it's like all three of them together that's possible i really think it is because even whenever he's watching him walk out the door he's like got that weird gene simmons he definitely does sinister like "Mm, Mm. yeah like this is gonna happen so yeah so it's all (laughs) nuke 100 percent um, and I, and he, so basically they go back to the house and he's like, Hey, would you run upstairs, you know, and go get, um, my keys. Yeah. My keys. They're in my pocket in the bathroom. She's like, or in my bedroom, bedroom or something like yeah. that. And we're like, okay. So a little bit earlier than this, we get to see that. It's always good to split up. Right. Right. Especially in a dark house. Come on. Right. Um, when you're being chased by it, he's got like radios. Yeah. <laughs> he's got radios everywhere. And he's Electricity going around everywhere. like. Taking them out. Yeah, he's destroying every small radio. But we know that there was some foreshadowing because there's a radio in the shower. That's right. And, of course, you know, they go up to the room. They scare the shit out of each other. And she's like, I couldn't find no keys. And he's like, damn, must be in the laundry in the in the bathroom. So they go in there, of course, you know, and they hear the boom. And it's he's come out of the freaking the toilet radio, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Basically, he corners him, and they shut the door, right? And they shut the door out of him, and he melts through it like a Jedi Knight, you know? <laughs> and like, <laughs> explodes the door, right? He comes through, and he's about to kill him, um, but he tr- it, like they trip him or something like that, and he and his hand falls in the toilet. And he starts shorting out. Yeah, he's like, uh, 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 mm. like he can't pull it, and mm. whenever they flush it, the water goes down. Because <laughs> physics. Yes, and... His hand is still wet. <laughs> it's like pulling him in. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. totally like don't a black work hole. Yeah, totally don't. Well, work that maybe way. it does for electricity and water. It's like sucking it down. No, it does no, not. No, 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 no. It's not like a. Yeah, it's not a vacuum. <laughs> Nobody would ever flush what they were sitting. <laughs> it's not an airline toilet. But you're not made out of electricity. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they end up flushing it a couple of times and then and ditching. Right. Right. They get through because it's a big ass bathroom too. <laughs> Um, so of course, you know, they can still hear him screaming while they go outside and they're about to get into, you know, his mom's car. And of course, you know, that's whenever, that's when we get the Herbie moment. Yeah. (laughs) He he like gets in and then all of a sudden it's playing on the radio. So he, he takes it over again. But before this, before he went to the house, he came out of a radio somewhere and the cops were looking for Weinbauer, right? They were right by his house. And he's on the radio. There's nothing here. But there's some crazy looking mother. F- <laughs> <laughs> and he gets out and, and he's like, just... hey, freeze, freako. You know, and so he tasers him for no reason because the dude was, I guess, not stopping. Well, I guess. Well, it's not 2000. 20 and they're not <laughs> shooting them you know what i mean just for walking right, right. <laughs> like you're a you're a rocker <laughs> get down um so he electrocutes him through that deal because right. it was electricity like completely disintegrates, like, disintegrates him everything but his boots right and the gun and the gun yeah yeah so it's weird um so of course the car's taken off and, and you know Eddie, they're like how are we gonna get there wait a minute <laughs> Runs over to the cop car, of course, and the cop car doesn't have a regular radio in it. Right. So, so basically, he thought he was a poor man's Mount Ralph Macchio, so he stole the right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, Please the other, guy. yeah, the other car is going around, you know, running into shit, <laughs> you know, just going crazy because he thinks he's in there, right? I guess. And um, so they go out to the radio station, right? Um, 
Like, yeah. doesn't he immediately take the stereo out of that or the radio out of that and throw it out the window? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he has no, he has nothing in it. So he turns on the cherries, right? They blow through the lights and everything like that. They get out to the radio station. And nobody's there. Because we do get a little bit of foreshadowing. Like, there was, like, some sort of. Um, there was pit- the guard guy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The security guard reading the penthouse or something like right. that, listening to the song. So Sammy killed him. Yep. Right. And then created, like, a exorcist whirlwind. <laughs> with all of the with everything playing so nobody could get through right right so he's protecting it and you know weinbauer's like hey yo um this is what we need to do right so got a plan count to a hundred and then run in there and and then destroy it right so he's got another little radio right and uh so he hops in the cop car right he turns on the radio and he starts talking shit to sammy kerr he's like come on you know, you little pussy, you yeah, know, you call bastard. him like a poser, basically. Yeah. You know? Well, that's what pisses him off the yeah. most. He's like, you're nothing but a, a wussy fucking poser. And he's like, no, uh-huh. you're uh-huh. weak to <laughs> screw you. <laughs> right. So he's got him trapped in the back of this deal, you know, right. He's melting the, the, the cage. Right. But where does he go? Cause he takes the little radio and he throws it in the back of the cop mm-hmm. car. Right. So, but where does he go? To the same bridge where he oh, almost yeah, died at, yeah. right? So if he would have fell fell off that bridge in the Ragman car, <laughs> he would have died. Yeah. Right? But in this one, he goes over the freaking bridge yeah. into the water, destroys Sammy, then he comes back up. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a safer car than the Oldsmobile. Is it? Probably. For going in the water? From, you know, <laughs> eight stories up? Well, I'm just saying it's a much heavier car. <laughs> yeah, you know? I guess. Yeah. It's like yeah. the, the Titanic of cars. <laughs> right. <laughs> Leslie destroyed it um, before that happened, right? The master case. Yeah, so it's destroying everything. Then, of course, he's done. Yeah. Sammy's done. Defeated Sammy Kerr. He's got the girl, right? And everything's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? He saved the day. He, he's, you know gonna get some tang Mm -hmm. everything's good right even roger's still alive yeah yeah so he stopped everything and and honestly (laughs) i'm still alive (laughs) um actually (laughs) i'm still alive i'm still alive um so literally it's like all right happy ending how is he gonna explain that the next day i don't know how they're explaining these i I often thought that in 80s movies like huh (laughs) how does that conversation go the next day they never show that portion no 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 it's like so this is all your fault not really (laughs) let me explain why it's not yeah because i wasn't even there at the dance whenever that was happening you're saying it's a ghost of sammy kerr but he has a witness too he's few well because the little girl Mm -hmm. was like whoa (laughs) well i mean i would say even the kids that were there yeah they really were like, other than the, yeah you know the jockos yeah jocko homos um as devo would say yes yeah um so overall you get this really arcing bitching ass story and it ends with an impossible feat <laughs> <laughs> that um destroys everything and destroys him and it ends great you know? Yep. But is it over? Till Trick or Treat 2. Yes. Trick- I think they're waiting till the 40th anniversary. Oh my God, that would be brilliant. <laughs> mm, that is like that is like my dream. <laughs> be like, it's so weird to be on the set again. <laughs> you have all the original people. I would have all the originals. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they were still alive. You know, sure. like have Roger there and, and then I'd have Ragman running the, the radio station. Because at the very end, he's like, wake up, sleepyheads. Right. <laughs> um, so, and I was wrong. It wasn't the 27th. It was the 24th. Oh, okay. October 24th, 1986 when this came out. So, overall. Oh, I, I enjoy this movie a lot. It's uh, definitely one I watched a lot as a kid. You know, how many dead rock stars do you give this out of five? Um, I would probably say three. And and again, I would say. Yes, part of that's probably because of the nostalgia. Right. You know, 
Of course, I give it five out of five. <laughs> um, it's because you're a madman. Right, right, I right. Would, I would probably push it closer to three and a half. Um, just because of Ozzy Osbourne right. and being able to understand him. <laughs> yeah, that's a boost in anything, honestly. <laughs> Nobody understood him until little Nicky again. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give him here. Um, you know what I'm wondering, too? This just popped into my mind, saying dead rock star. I wonder if he was 27 years old. Oh, Sammy uh, Kerr. Yeah, I wonder if they made him <laughs> part of the 27 Club. I don't know. I don't think that was... I mean, that was a, still a thing, but I don't know if it was as prominent in culture. Yes. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, you had everybody in the 60s. I mean, well, Jimi Hendrix course. looked like he was 50 years old, but he died at 27. <laughs> right, right. I mean, good Lord. It's so crazy to, to see, like, Mama Cass, and you're like, damn, it looks like my grandma. Right. But, yeah, she was 27. <laughs> you know? Janis Joplin, Joplin. 27. Yeah. You know? Um, now, Kurt Cobain, he looked like it. And I think when... That happened, that brought that forever 27 thing back, you know, kind of. Hank Williams was 27 too, I think. Really? Yep. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Wasn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, but At any rate. Yeah. At any rate, this movie is bitching. And that's the only way that you could really put it. If you want a good heavy metal Halloween, you should probably watch some Trick or Treat. And by heavy metal, I mean 80s heavy metal. <laughs> if you want some 80s hair metal in your Halloween, watch Trick or Treat from yeah. 1986 with Skippy. Yeah. Don't stop the fight. I, I, I. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be honest. I've, I've never owned a Fastway album, nor did I know much about them. Um. I remember the music, obviously, you know, from watching the movie. It was a ute. <laughs> the two utes. <laughs> <laughs> no, Hank Williams wasn't 27. I didn't think so. He was born in 23 and died in 53, so he was 30. Close. Damn. But at any rate, that was 29. trick or treat, my yeah. friend. Anything else you got to say about this movie? No, no. Uh, there's nothing else to say about how badass this movie is, you know? Uh, I mean, this is just one of those... This is one of those movies that I could pull out to people and, and that are like, oh, man, I love movies and stuff. And I'm like, hello, have you ever seen Trick or Treat? <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, have you ever seen Return of the Killer Tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> Most people have seen that yeah. one because of USA so. Up All Night. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. But no, this is a great movie, though. It's both a, of those movies right there are so cultish. What's that? <laughs> this movie and Attack of the Killer <laughs> Tomatoes Part 2. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if anybody can find it, because they've only released it three times on home media. One was a VHS. Right. Number two was a DVD that I found somehow. No laser disc? No. Wow. No, no, no. Um, and um, one was a foreign Blu-ray. Oh, okay. I think. Um, Italian Blu-ray or some shit like that. For real. I don't know why you'd want this movie on Blu-ray, but okay. Why not? I, mean, I guess the music would sound better. <laughs> or something. Theatrically, um, DVD in 2002, three-disc collection, collect, three-disc collection, collectors, God, I can't say it, three-disc edition. Uh, what, three containing, disc edition? Yeah. <laughs> it contains an all-region Blu-ray. Okay. Uh, region 2 DVD, soundtrack CD and booklet, uh, released in Germany. Mm. 1,500 copies. Wow. There wow. you go. And that is a very, very rare one. Yes. But I bought mine for five bucks. <laughs> Walmart. It was weird because I saw Ozzy in, in Home Dude on it and I was like, what? Trick or treat on TV? <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> and they really, like you, you mentioned that earlier, that they really did market with those two, even though they're in it very shortly. Yeah, they have like a picture of Ozzy from the Osbournes. Yeah. And they have a picture of Gene Simmons like from Runaway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like on the on the cover. I still don't, I don't mm-hmm. have it anymore. But and but no no no. I think the actual disc has it too. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was it was one of those double discs where the top was widescreen and the bottom was full. Yeah. So, I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, awesome movie. Go see it. 
um, when they play it at a midnight movie, which I doubt that they will. I don't think they do that anymore. Uh, there's some Not out there. Much, so. um, maybe at the uh, Beverly. Yeah. 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 Well, with that, um, we have to go fight this pterodactyl that just entered our studio. And um, I hope you guys have a happy, happy, happy Halloween. Have a Halloween, listen to some heavy metal, eat some candy, and a big Montana. <laughs> a big Montana, and uh, don't don't revenge people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Peace out. Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> Why they call you Chance? My mama took one. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Duvet! <laughs>